Hey, Richard Bryce here today. I want to help you to improve your two-handed backhand. If it's a weakness right now, we've got to stop it being a weakness and then hopefully you can start to turn it into a weapon as well. The way that we're going to be doing this is we're going to be talking about one of the most crucial parts of it and that is the contact point. Get this part wrong and you're never going to have the backhand you want. So that's what we need to address. Hopefully you're going to find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that now. Contact point is the most important part of every stroke. It's what dictates where the ball goes. Can you control the angle of your racket face relative to the speed of the swing? Obviously, two-handed backhand is the same as all the other strokes. This is the most important part. You can get everything else right. You can look like Djokovic on your preparation. You can look like Djokovic on your swing, but you get the timing wrong, and it's going to go down into the floor because you've got the contact point wrong. Conversely, you can get everything else wrong. You'll be doing a double salco, and then just... No, not quite. But you can get everything else wrong and that part right, and the ball goes in and you hit a great shot because it's all about that contact point. Now, when it comes to the contact point, there's two things that we need to consider, and we're going to be talking about them. The first one is how far out in front you need to meet the ball. And what this is going to come down to is it's going to need to be fairly far out in front, maybe a foot, a foot and a half, maybe a little bit less, kind of depends on the length of your limbs and stuff like that. It's going to be in front for all of them. So neutral stance, open stance, semi-open stance, closed stance. We still want to contact the point out in front. And the reason why is the way that we efficiently generate power and racket head speed is a precise sequence. Hip, torso, arm, or shoulder, racket. It's the same for all rotational sports. If I was going to punch you in the face, which I'm not going to do, that would be mean of me, but if I did want to punch you in the face, I wouldn't. I'm going to be driving through the hip, the torso, the shoulder, into there. That's how we create force. Same if I was playing baseball. It's all the same. So the two-handed backhand, it's the same. That's why we do our unit turn. We're going to get the racket into some variation of this, or this, or this, or this, precisely where it is for you. We're not going to worry about that now. But the torso is going to be side on. The pelvis will be side on. So neutral stance, closed stance open stance, we're still all side on. The reason that we're doing that is because we're then going to drive through the hip, pulling the racket down. So driving through the hip, then the torso, and then the arms start to kick in. And now we've got the hands accelerating and we're hitting through and around. So we're kind of extending through there into contact point. So it's that sequence of events that allows us to efficiently generate power. Now, please don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not telling you to hit the ball as hard as you can on your backhand. What I'm saying is this is how we efficiently generate power. So we need to be able to do it efficiently, and then we need to operate well within our comfort level, so like 50, 60, 70% 70 of what we can do, so that we can hit with consistency as well. But if we hit the ball late, we haven't had a chance to go through that sequence, so it doesn't work. And when it comes to topspin, we also need to be able to meet the ball out in front for the top spin. So yeah, you can force it if it's late, you can create spin by doing that. But most of the top spin is going to be coming from, you drop the racket, so there's this dropping down of the left hand relative to the right hand, on a right hander. As you come through, the left hand is going to start to overtake the right hand, and we're going to get this motion here that creates the top spin, but that happens out in front of the body. So again, if you meet the ball back here, it doesn't work. It's got to be out in front in order to get that to happen efficiently. So contact point out in front, it's going to be the same on high and low balls. So when the ball is down low, you're still going to meet it out in front. When the ball is up high, that was a very funny bounce. When the ball is up high, you're still going to meet the ball out in front. Okay, so contact point out in front, a foot to a foot and a half-ish, depending on a few things. The next thing that we need to consider when it comes to the contact point is how far away from your body it is. Now, as a general rule, often players get too close to it and they get jammed, and that's a big problem. Um, but it is going to vary dependent on how high the ball is. So we're going to be swinging out to it. So we've just talked about the biomechanics. We're here and then we swing out. So it is going to come out, but the lower down the ball is, so if I'm hitting a two-hander from down there, it's fairly close to this leg, reasonably close to this body. Ooh, not a very nice shot, but fairly close to my body. If we're hitting from further away, so if we kind of take that here as the contact point that we've got, and I now think about trying to hit that ball out to the side, 
that's got further away from me. So what we've gone, we've gone from there for the lower ball and now out here for the higher ball. So what you've got to keep in mind is that if the ball is lower, you've got to judge that and you're going to be trying to contact a little bit closer. You might be okay on that one where you're probably going wrong is when the ball is higher, you're probably still getting too close and you can cheat it. You can make it work on the two-hander, but really you want to be swinging from there and swinging out at the ball. Like when you see the best players do it, they've got that nice spacing. So that's the part that you need to work on as well. So they're the two key factors that we've got with this contact point. We've got meeting it out in front, and then we've got making sure that we've got the right distance, and that one's gonna vary. Now the hard part is, that nasty person down the other end of the net, or maybe they're a nice person, I don't know, but they are gonna hit it wherever they wanna hit it, and you've gotta get your body in the right place to be able to do it. So a lot of it is gonna be about getting the footwork right, moving into position, making yourself into, or getting yourself into the right position. So spacing is one, but where a lot of people struggle with is with the high ones. So if you struggle with the high ones, you're gonna to have to get back as quickly as you can, allow the ball to drop, so then you can still meet the ball out in front with this right nice spacing as well. So you've gotta get your body into the right position. Now something that complicates all of this and really holds a lot of adult players back is that all these things that I'm on about are related to how well your visual system is functioning. This is something that most people take for granted. They don't even think about it. And I didn't used to know that you could improve your vision until I learned about and it changed everything for me. But if you can't predict how or where the ball's gonna go, it's really hard to react and get into position quickly. If you can't judge distance accurately, it's really hard to get the spacing right, even though I've told you what you should try and aim for. If you can't judge the speed of the ball and how far it is away, it's really hard to start your swing early enough and to adjust the speed of your swing so that you can meet the ball at this ideal contact point. Here, I'm dropping it for myself. It's always in front, it's easy, but when the ball's coming to you at different speeds and different heights and different trajectories, that's why it's so hard to do because potentially your visual system doesn't allow you to do it. Luckily, like I said, that's stuff you can actually change. And if you're interested in learning more about it, I've created a masterclass that's gonna go into a lot more detail and explain how you can start to improve your visual system. And the cool thing is I've uh, done a few different assessments so these assessments are things that I do with players when I work with them that are going to help us to figure out if this is in, is in fact part of what's going on with your, with your contact point issues. So if that's interesting to you, I'll place the link in the description and I'll place the link up there and you can check that out. But otherwise, just focus on what we've talked about here and uh, see if you can make it work out in front, closer on lower balls, further away on higher balls, get the work done with your feet, get in the right position and go from there. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've, uh, you've learned some useful information. If you have, give me that thumbs up, let me know. Any questions, leave them down below. If there's something that I didn't explain well enough, uh, I'll try and answer that for you. And of course, uh, just general comments. What's going on with your two-handed backhand? Tell me, is there any, are there any content that you would like to see so I can work on that? Okay, I'll catch you next time.